Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm bringing you a chalk effect Photoshop tutorial. This was made from an existing graphic that was created in Illustrator and we just brought it in and applied all of the filters to make it look like this. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here to File, New and I'm going to set this up at 2000 pixels by 1500 pixels high, resolution 72. RGB color is our mode and we're working in 8-bit. I'm going to go ahead and click create. I'm going to unlock the background layer and I have these here set to white is my foreground, black is my background. I'm going to press command and delete, control and backspace to fill it with that black background color. This is just a basic black color. Now I'm going to double click right here to bring up my layer styles. I'm going to come here and click on pattern overlay. So the pattern that you see here is called dark wall. So you can get this from transparenttextures.com by just typing in dark wall. These are all free textures and I'll go ahead and leave you a link down in the description. But they have a whole bunch to choose from. This is just the first I saw that resembled somewhat of a chalkboard background browse through their selection and choose what's best for you but uh, this is the one I'm using it's called dark wall I have the blend mode set to screen opacity 100% and my scale is at 300% for this one I'm going to go ahead and click OK now I'm going to add a new layer here and I have my foreground color set to white because we're going to do some chalk dust like an erased uh, effect on the chalkboard so I'm going to come here to the brushes and I'm right here in legacy brushes so these are all the brushes that come with Photoshop inside of there I'm gonna come to the folder called default brushes and I'm gonna scroll down to almost the bottom and I'm gonna choose this brush right here it's called charcoal large smear so this is the one that I'm gonna be using I'm gonna bring up the brush size to about 175 I want it to be pretty big and my mode is normal. I have the opacity set to 8%. Flow is 100. And I'm going to click right here on the little gear. So I'm going to take it off of stroke catch-up. I believe that is the default. So I'm going to uncheck that and I'm going to check catch-up on stroke end. And then I'm just going to drag this across. Maybe just more toward the center. And you can make this as dark as you want to or as light as you want to. It's up to you. We want to make the effect of smeared chalk dust. So as if it were erased a few times. I'm going to leave this as it is. So this is just a demonstration. So I think that this is good enough. So this is our background. I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these. Command the letter G. Control letter G to group them. And this is going to be my background. So before we get started with the effect tutorial, I just wanted to show you a brush here in Photoshop. So if you're a, a hand letterer or just like to draw in this uh, chalk effect, then I want to show you one of uh, Photoshop's default brushes. I'm going to go ahead and click the little plus icon to add a new layer there. And I'm going to come here to the brushes in default brushes. So if you're at legacy brushes, this is I'm working in Photoshop 2020, so I'm at legacy brushes default brushes and inside that default brushes folder uh, there's this one called chalk this is a pretty good brush if you're drawing directly inside of Photoshop how that really does look like uh, chalk this is a great brush for lettering or just you know basic drawing like this I mean great for coloring in your objects so I just wanted to show you that brush quickly so if you're just drawing or you're doing lettering or something like that um, where you want it to look like chalk that brush is all you really need you don't even need an effect so what I'm going to show you next is how to apply a chalk effect like this to artwork that you already made so I'm going to just leave that and then I'm going to come here and add a new layer above the background folder and this is where our artwork is going to sit so I'm just going to name that art. I'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object because we're going to be placing our art inside of this smart object. So I'm going to double click to open that up and I'm going to come here and just choose an artwork that I already have. This will just save me some time and I'm going to place that in there. So we're going to turn this basic white vector graphic into chalk art. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this. This is a PSB file. This is where we're going to place everything. We're not going to do any effects or change this at all. So we're just going to go ahead and close that. Hit save. So I'm going to start by adding three more layers on top of this. So we have three layers here. So I'm going to fill all of these layers with that black color. And I'm going to name these. This one's going to be called fibers. This one is noise. And this one is clouds. So for the clouds, I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. For my noise, that's going to be screen. And for my fibers, I'm going to use soft light. So now I'm going to right click and convert each one of these into a smart object. Now I'm going to hold the option key on my keyboard, alt key on your PC, and I'm going to hover between the art layer and the clouds layer, and then just click to create a clipping mask. I'm going to do the same thing here with noise and clouds. Just click and then now fibers and noise. So I've just created clipping masks that are going all the way through down to that art layer right here. So let's go ahead and start with the clouds layer. I'm going to come here to filter, render clouds. Then I'm going to come to noise and go to filter, noise, add noise. Our amount is 200%, distribution is uniform, and make sure that monochromatic is checked off and click OK. Now we're going to come here to Fibers, and I'm going to come up to Filter, Render, Fibers. The settings we're using here are 28 variants, and our strength is 61. What we're looking for here are the distinct lines straight up and down, and I think this looks OK, so I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to come here to the art and I'm going to apply some filters directly to this layer right here. So I'm going to come here to filter, distort, and ripple. The amount is going to be 100% and our size is going to be small. This is going to make this look less perfect. You can see the very smooth edges that we've got here. Something hand-drawn probably isn't going to look like this, so we're just going to rough up the edges a little bit. Now we're going to come back up here to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to blur that one pixel and click OK. We're just trying to give this a softer, you know, chalk dust effect on the outside. Now I'm going to double click right here to bring up my layer styles, and we're going to add a few layer styles here. The first one is an inner shadow. For the inner shadow, our blend mode is normal. Our color is black, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Opacity 40%, angle 120. I have a global light unchecked. My distance is 3 and my size is 32. And that's just going to soften it just a little bit more. So you can see the effect that that's had. Next, I'm going to add an outer glow. So for the outer glow, our blend mode is normal, opacity 100%. Our noise is 25%. You can adjust this. And our color is white. So we're using a solid color white. Technique softer spread zero size two. And you can adjust this as needed as well. But I just want to give this a subtle effect on the outside. So you can kind of see what it's doing right here. Our range 50%. Now I'm going to come here to drop shadow and we're not actually trying to create a shadow here. We're trying to create even more dust there. So you can see in the little preview image when I turn that off what it looks like. So just giving it a little more of that chalk dust effect. Our blend mode for this is screen. Our color is white. Opacity 15%. Our size is 200. And our contour is this one right here. It's called half round. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to grab that top and the art layer. While I'm holding the Shift key to grab all of those, command the letter G, Control and the letter G on a PC. And this is going to be our art layer. I'm going to go ahead and click on that again. And I'm going to come here to my adjustment layers and choose solid color. I'm going to leave it at white for now. With this selected, I'm going to press Option on my keyboard, Alt on a PC, and Hover to clip that into that Art folder there. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this to Color. 
Now, if I want to change the color of my chalk, I can just double click right here and try to keep it on a more neutral color. If you come over here, it just starts to look unrealistic. So try to keep them pretty neutral, um, like muted colors like this. And then you, know, you can um, change your colors right here with the slider. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now that you have this set up, you can use it as a template for all of your artwork. What you would do is come in here to the art folder and then you're just going to double click on that smart object. I'm going to go ahead and hide that layer right there and I'm going to come here to the text and just type something in. Let's see. Make it much bigger. The, the color here doesn't really matter. Close this, make sure to hit save. And then when you come back to the original document, you'll see that all of the filters, layer styles, and effects were all applied to this layer. So you don't have to redo this stuff every single time. All you have to do is change your artwork here inside of this smart object and you're good to go. So if you're interested in effects like this inside of Photoshop, I do have an entire playlist dedicated to Photoshop effects. I'll go ahead and leave a link for you down in the description for that. If you liked this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Leave me a comment. All of that stuff really does make it easier for me to keep making videos. So all of that would be greatly appreciated. And also visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.